Okay, so the other day I got some fun mail. I didn't order anything, but I was surprised with a fun box from Concord and Ninth. So they went ahead and sent me all of this over and I'm so excited to show you what's inside this box. It absolutely brightened my day when I opened it up. So I'm gonna brighten your day too because everything inside here is perfection. So they recently just released their brand new colors for their ink collection and they sent me over their new inks with the colors that they have just added, but also the coordinating cardstock and some of their newest stamps from their latest release. So let's go ahead and take a peek what's inside. You're gonna be so excited because everything in here is just perfection. I cannot wait to start creating. Okay, so inside we have a really cute little sticker that matches the front of the box. I am totally putting this in my craft room. I absolutely love the vibe of it but we also have their brand new colors from their ink collection. So we have Wildberry, Watermelon, Creamsicle, Grasshopper, Eucalyptus, and Rainforest. And I am so excited for this Creamsicle. I know it's not a secret that orange really isn't my jam, but I've always said that I really like a nice sherbet. And as you can see, we finally have an orange that I absolutely love. And so I'm really, really excited about this. I'm also really excited about the water. I'm excited about all of them, but these two have my heart. Look at the wild berry. I think all of them together too. I just love the entire vibe of all six of these and how they coordinate so beautifully. So we also have, as I mentioned, the coordinating card stocks, which we'll get to. So with their release of inks, they did create the coordinating papers as well. So if you're like me and you have to have all things Concord and Ninth, then you're gonna wanna add these to your collection so that you have all of the colors. They also have a really fun everyday expression die set. I love die collections like this that have the shadow layer. I think they are so pretty. And these are something that you are going to pull for time and time again. So I tend to not place these very far away from me. I put them in my favorites bin because I feel like these work for everything and I want them within quick reach. So we have those. And then we also have this really nice cover die. Isn't this neat? So it's just so intricate and fun. I feel like there's so many fun things you could do with this. I love the idea of doing some paper piecing and I also love the idea of having fun with paper strips, but that is so pretty as well. And again, I'll link everything that you're seeing down below in case you want to add any of these to your collection because everything's just so pretty. Okay, so we also have the turnabout jig, which means that there is a turnabout stamp. These are so neat. If you haven't done a turnabout stamp before, I'll link a video where I do this. It is so fun and you'll want to have the jig as well as the stamp. So this stamp is really, really neat. On the back, you can see all of the combinations that you can do. So if you stamp it once, you'll get this. If you rotate and stamp it twice, you will get this design. And then three times and four times. How fun. I love this. I think this is so fun and retro. Very cute. And then it also has some really, really fun little verbiage on here. Hey, good looking, <laughs> you're the best. I love the font on this too, I think it's so fun. Okay, so those two go together. And then we also have another stamp set. This is a bunch of balloons stamp set. Look at all of the fun wording. I think it's so fun. And then we have a nice hollow balloon. So dainty too, look at the little bow. I love how thin that stamp is, it's so pretty. And I love the variety of fonts. I think those are so fun to mismatch and bring together on a really, really neat card. Then I have the coordinating dies that go along with this stamp set here. Very, very fun. Oh, and that's what they'll look like when they are all trimmed out. So that's very cute. Okay, then we have the Bunch of Balloons stencil pack. So this will coordinate as well but it looks like there is, well, maybe it doesn't coordinate with this, I'm not quite sure, but there are a few different combinations here. So we have a really neat hooray, isn't that fun? Then we have an entire background panel, which is just adorable. Stuff like this is really fun to create and then to place a really simple sentiment on front. So I like doing that where you can kind of pair something busy with something more simple. So we might have to play around with that. I think that that would be a really fun idea. And then we have this just little grouping of balloons, which I think is adorable. So, so fun. I love that. I'm definitely going to bring that out and play with it. 
Okay, so whoops, I put those back in there, but we already talked about those. And then we have the, now these are the little labels that you can put on your full-size ink pads or your ink cubes. I also have placed these on little tab dividers where I go ahead and organize all of my colored cardstock. So I'll place a link to a video on how I use these to actually create little tabs for my colored cardstock. So I'm really happy that I have these so that I can go ahead and get those ready as well so I can organize all of the cardstock. All right. In addition, I have all of the coordinating little enamel dots with the new colors. Aren't these just too much? I love them, so pretty. Okay, and then as I mentioned, we have the coordinating cardstock in the brand new colors. Again, creamsicle, watermelon, wildberry, grasshopper, eucalyptus, and rainforest. And I think it goes without saying that the names that they give their ink is just perfection. I love it. So there are all the new colors. I can open them up so you can see what they look like in the cardstock version. Okay, so here is the creamsicle. Then we move on to watermelon. Oops. There's the watermelon. Oh my gosh. These three together are just gorgeous too. So then we have the wild berry and the grasshopper. Then we have eucalyptus and a rainforest. Oh my goodness. The fact that these are just so perfect together, it's just not lost on me, I love that. Okay, so those are the little coordinating card stocks in their brand new colors. And then finally we have a really fun card stock collection. Oh, look at these. So we have a really neat like plaid gingham here. We have a polka dot and we have stripes. Aren't those so pretty? And again, all in the brand new colors. I love that. So fun. This makes really easy card making when you have a pattern already done for you. So definitely pick up this as well. Okay, again, everything will be linked down below, but I think it's time for us to go ahead and start creating with all of these beautiful things. Okay, let's go ahead. Now I really want to use everything in this box, but let's go ahead and start with this really fun stencil. And I will definitely do additional videos that will focus on the other products that I received in this box because how can you not? I wanna just create with all of it. But for the sake of time, let's go ahead and do a fun little trio. And I'm going to do all three of these and make three different cards. Okay, so I'm gonna put this to the side as some inspiration. Let's go ahead and start with, oh, okay, so I see. So this, I'm trying to decide here goes like that. Oh, that's fun. So it's not four stencils. It is two, and then you can just pick and choose which colors to add in there. I think that's really neat. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a panel, and then we'll start creating with that. Oh my gosh, these are all so cute. Okay, so I have my large Misty, and I also have a piece of 80 pound cardstock, and I just trimmed this down to six inches by six inches that I'm gonna place right in here. And I'm also going to place just a little piece of washi tape there. Okay, then I'm gonna take either stencil, doesn't really matter, and I'm gonna place that right there. And I see that I have a little bit of tape there, but that's okay because I'm gonna end up trimming this down, so that's completely fine. And then I'll just add another piece of tape just to hold that stencil in place. Okay, I'm gonna go for four colors here. So what I will do is I'm going to do the grasshopper and the eucalyptus for the first one. So I'll go ahead and remove the little caps here and I'll grab a little green brush. Okay, so with the eucalyptus, I'm just going to get a little bit on my brush. I'm gonna dab it off on my mat right off camera here. And when I first start working with new ink colors, it's really important to kind of understand how each of them works. So this one, I already know, goes on really bold right away. So that's why I'm tapping it off just to learn a little bit more about the color. Isn't that pretty? They do start smoothing out as they get going. So they, as they dry, they smooth out. Now I'm already realizing that I forgot to kind of 
mismatch. So I'm gonna have to use this side of the panel because I went in really hot thinking I'm doing the whole thing. So let me start getting a little bit more methodical about where each of the colors is going to go. So let's make this one the eucalyptus, Isn't that pretty. Okay, and then you could do some masking if you think you're getting a little close. And then I'm going to do this, so pretty. Let's also do probably this one, okay. And let's do this. And there's really no rhyme or reason to it. You can just make up a little pattern that you wanna do. Okay, and then maybe we'll do this right here. Okay, so the eucalyptus is so pretty. I love that. Okay, I'm going to set that to the side and let's do, oh, I'm sorry. I said eucalyptus the whole time because the cap <laughs> was off. That was grasshopper. My apologies. Oh my goodness, I think I'm just so excited that I'm getting them all mixed up. So yes, that first one was grasshopper. Now we're doing eucalyptus. Okay, so I have a different brush for this color. I'll tap it off. And I can do those remaining balloons. So we'll do this one. Well, the remaining balloons on this stencil, that is. So here comes eucalyptus in here. Oh my gosh, those two colors together are just gorgeous. And then here. And I will just fill in the rest of my little balloons. And I'm okay if I'm, you know, a little shallow on the edges because I'm, again, gonna be trimming this down, so it's gonna be just fine. And I probably should have cleaned off my stencil before I did this so that I could um, not drag any of that grasshopper into the color, but it's still gonna be just fine, it's so pretty. Okay, and then I'm not going to worry about the rest because I know I'm gonna be focused on this side, so totally fine, but I'll, go ahead and finish off the last two little balloons. Okay, so now let's go ahead, that looks good. So again, the first two colors from the new collection that I used were the grasshopper and the eucalyptus. Just remove this tape really quickly and there they are, isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, let me clean off this stencil and then I'll grab the second stencil. Okay, so bringing in that second stencil and another new piece of tape here. I'll probably place this tape here and maybe one more piece down here. Okay, now let's do the second two colors. And again, those are creamsicle and watermelon. Okay, so I have creamsicle opened up. I'm so excited for this color. Okay, and then I need to focus again that I'm gonna do more random um, pieces here. So let's do creamsicle here. Oh, that's pretty. That is, ah, uh, it was made for me. It's the exact color that I just adore when it comes to orange. Okay, so we'll do that. Let's do this. And again, I will just start going randomly around my stencil. And I'll do this orange color first, and then we'll move on to that watermelon and do the remaining balloons. I love it so much. Okay, again, I'm focusing on this side, and a, my goal is to do an A2 size card, so that will be four and a quarter by five and a half, so we're gonna lose a lot there. But I like to do the actual um, stencil side just because I feel like it's just easier for me to kind of visualize it. Okay, let's do watermelon. And you know what I'll do is I'm going to just kind of wipe away. And I should have done that for the last stencil, but I didn't. But just wiping away any of the ink that I did initially in the creamsicle. That way it doesn't kind of blend with it. Oh my gosh, look at the watermelon. Okay, watermelon and creamsicle were just made for me, I think. I love it. Oh, they're so pretty. Gorgeous. Okay. 
There we go. Now again, you could mask these off so that you didn't get you know any of the little pinks on your other balloons or any of the other colors on your balloons, but I actually kind of think it's fun. So I went ahead and skipped that part, but oh, isn't that pretty? I actually really like how the pink comes into contact with the other balloon. I think it adds a little bit of shading as well. I think that's gorgeous. I love those colors all together. Okay, let's go ahead and let me grab that other stencil really quickly. I actually didn't clean it off quite yet, but I am going to add a, I think, um, let's do a eucalyptus really quickly right to this corner because I actually probably will need to use a little bit of that in my crop. Okay, so then there we go. Okay, very nice. Okay, so here's my first panel. Isn't that pretty? I love those colors. Let's go ahead and trim this down so we can really focus. And then we can start get an idea for where we want to take this cute card. Okay, I'm going to bring in my mini trimmer here. And I know I'm going to focus on this side, right? So let me just go ahead and create my first cut over there. And we'll do that. Okay, so my end game measurement is going to be four and a quarter by five and a half. Let me focus on the, oh, you know what? No, it's gonna be um, trimmed down even further than that. We're gonna do four by five and a quarter. So I think, We'll do this, okay? And then obviously we wanna take that top part off. Okay, oh, that looks really nice. And then I actually might take a little bit more off because I like the bottom, um, like the tones at the bottom, so. There we go, and then again, our final height is gonna be five and a quarter, so we'll do that. How cute. Okay, I wanna play around with some of the colored cardstock for my sentiment. So I'm just going to kind of lay this all out. And I'm thinking thinking I will do the watermelon. I'm thinking of doing best wishes. Let me see. Or maybe even you are amazing. Let's do you are amazing. I think that'll be really pretty. And I, I'm thinking I'll do the shadow layer in the color and then we'll do white for the actual text actually changed my mind. I'm gonna just switch it around and I'm going to do the shadow layer in white and then the text in the watermelon. Okay, running through the shadow layer and I will do this two times for each. So two shadow layers and then two little texts. Okay, and here is our You Are Amazing. Look at the lettering, it's just so pretty. Also, I need to be mindful for the dot to the eye, which looks like it's still in the die. So, I'll grab that really quickly. Oh, isn't that pretty? I love it. I think it was a nice choice too to do the white as the shadow layer because I think, um, I don't know, I think it's gonna frame it a little bit better instead of doing it the other way around. Let me find, let's see, it's gonna be this one. There we go. Okay, so we have all of our little sentiment layers all ready to go. I'm just going to grab a little bit of liquid glue. I think I need to get a new bottle. And then we'll just stack these one on the other, just like that. And then just wiggle that into position. Give it a little bit of dimension by having two layers there. I think that looks really nice. Okay, so I will do the exact same thing. Here's the little dots to my eyes, so I'm being really careful about that. 
And this time I'll grab just some tweezers to help me hold this tiny little piece and put some glue right around this little sentiment. Okay, there we go. And then I can just place that there and pinch that into position, just like that. Okay, that did really well, actually. You can kind of use your tweezers just to kind of really solidify the positioning there. Okay, there we are. Oh, that looks really good. Just grab a little stamp block couple other little spots. There we go. Okay, we'll let that position and then I'm going to place these right on the actual base. I think it'll be much easier. Okay, that looks good. So I will just repeat with my tweezers here. Use this to hold and then I'll add my glue. And then we'll place it right down. That looks good. Okay. Great, okay, I'm actually going to call that good. And again, we'll place the little dot to the eye. Okay, that might've been too much. This little dot is so tiny, so that might've been too much glue, but it will dry, so that's okay. Do one more, it's much better. And place that. I'm gonna give that just a second for that little dot to the eye, but I think this is going to look so cute. Okay, I'm gonna bring in a 110 pound cardstock and really quickly build my card base. This is 11 by four and a quarter, and I will place my score mark at five and a half because that is half of 11. And I'm going to do a top folding card, and this is at the A2 size, and that final size is going to be four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'll open this up place some magnets just to hold this into position. And then with my little card panel here, I'm going to take some foam tape and simply give it a little bit of dimension on the back. Okay, there we go. Got a little um, fold over there, but I think it's going to be actually just fine. But place that right on my card base, just like that. Oh, that looks great. Okay, and then we will do the little sentiment. And I thought it would be really fun. I think I'm gonna bring it up just like that. Maybe actually, actually I think I'm gonna do it right in the middle. I think that's actually really fun and I don't do that often. So I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm going to grab these teeny tiny foam squares and just give it a little bit more dimension. I think it'll be really just a nice final touch. And my tweezers, I peeled all those little backers off. And again, I think a middle sentiment is going to be super fun here. Just like that, okay. I'm gonna grab some of my favorite sequins because I just feel like it's so perfect for this really fun party vibe. And I'll add them around the sentiment. So I think I will do a couple down here in a little trio, just like this. And then I'll add, let's see, make sure they're going the right way. Maybe, you know what, maybe one and two there. Actually, why not do a second trio? there. So I'll grab my glue and go ahead and place those down. Okay, there is our first little card. I think that turned out so cute. I love that. Later I'll add my little personalized stamp to the back, but I think that's really fun and <laughs> I'm just excited about this whole collection. I think it's so fun and depending on the colors that you use, you could make such a variety of colors with this collection. Super, super cute. 
Okay, so I want to continue working with this stencil set. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just using a big piece of cardstock here. This is 80 pound once more, but I'm not going to have it trimmed down to size just yet because I want to give myself a little bit of grace when playing with this hooray. That way, if I don't get it quite um, lined up, then I can have a little grace with that. Okay, so one thing I'm noticing is that if I do the H and the O, well, you'll see it play out, but I think that these two, the H and the O and the R and the A are spaced evenly. So I need to just focus on getting those placed down just right. And then I can add the other O here, the A here, and you'll see it all play out. But I'm thinking now that I'm looking at this, I think they've actually made it pretty simple. So what I might do actually is I might start at the bottom with the R and the Y, just like that. And let's grab some tape, get this taped into position. That way it just holds that stencil really nice. Okay, we'll do that. And this time I am going to mask so that I keep my ink contained within the little colors that I am working in. So I will use this Heffy Doodle tape. And again, I'm working with the R and the Y. So I think I'm going to keep the same color combination that I did last time because I really liked that. And I'm also going to mask off this surrounding area here. Okay, and I'm just using my Misty just because it's a nice little positioner, but you definitely don't have to. You could just put it on your work surface if you'd like. All right, so bringing back all of these colors, I just really love how they work together. Plus, I feel like maybe it's me being in the complete coldness of winter, but I'm feeling like I'm giving myself some good vibes for spring if I'm doing this. So I'm loving the spring tones that we're getting here. All right, let's go ahead and start with, well, I guess the closest brush to me is this pink one. So I will go ahead and start with the watermelon and I'm gonna tap it off. You might not be able to see where I'm tapping, but I'll tap it off down here and then come in and place it right on that R. Okay. And I have no idea about the color placement that I'm going to do, like which where each color is going to go and on which letter, but we're just gonna let it play out. Okay, and I think that looks really nice. I'm gonna deepen it just a little bit. This is such a fun color. I'm loving this new color collection. I think that this combo is super fun. Okay, now I'll go ahead and maybe add just a little bit more to the bottom. Okay, that looks good. And I'll use and reuse this post-it tape as I go. But let's do a little peel and reveal. Oh, and you have to be careful with your washi tape. I always get a little bit overzealous with that. But well, again, we're going to be trimming this down, so it should be just fine. Okay, let's do this. Oh, I guess I should have left my what am I doing? Okay, I should have left the stencil in place, but there's our little R, super cute. But you can leave this in place because the Y is already set up for us. So that's easy to place right back there. In fact, I'm gonna put my magnet here. And then for the Y, let's go ahead and just move over our little mask strips all around here. For the Y, I'm going to do the grasshopper. And this grasshopper comes in really bold, really quickly. So again, learning about the inks. It's not a bad thing. It's just learning about the inks that are in front of you. Sometimes you have to layer and layer to get your desired color, and sometimes it is right away. So I tapped my brush a lot, and I got a lot of that ink off, and this is still how it came in on the first try. So that's really exciting. But it's just noting that about your inks so you know how to use them, right? Okay, so then there is the Y, and now I can remove this, and I'll clean off this stencil, that way I'm not accidentally transferring any of the ink, but let me clean that off, and then we'll just bring that A right down here, 
and get it all positioned. Okay, so I can see through that stencil pretty well so that I can just kind of position that how I'd like it. And I can also, you know, reference the example. Oh, you know what? I can do the exclamation point as well. So let's do that. That's super fun. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. I forgot about that, that exclamation point. That's super cute. So those two are lined up really well together as well. So I'll just let this all stay put. And then again, add my masking so that I'm only working with one element. In this case, it's going to be the A. And I'm going to add creamsicle. Here comes a creamsicle right onto the A. New favorite, so pretty. All done. And I'll simply just move a couple of these. So this can move over, this can move over. And just because I want to be super careful here, I'll move this over as well. Okay, let's do eucalyptus for our final color. Okay, I think that looks really nice. And once more, we'll just wipe this down and we can line up the top. So then we just simply line up that H and that O. And again, I'm just kind of looking at the stencil template and you just bring it up just a little bit. I'm gonna do that. Okay, all right. And then I can do my masking, but before I cover all of it up, I want to kind of get an idea for where I want to place some of those colors. So I think what I'll do is I will do maybe the um, eucalyptus and then the watermelon and finally I'll do creamsicle. All right, and then being gentle to remove everything, we'll just position this O up here and blend our last color. Okay, there is the last element. Okay, there we go. Super pretty. Peel all of this up. And there it is. Isn't that really fun? I think that's really cool. Okay, I'm thinking about having some fun with the coordinating stamps and maybe doing It's Your Birthday right in the middle or either Let's Celebrate. I'm kind of liking It's Your Birthday. I think that's super fun. So I will first trim down this panel and then we can go ahead and, I really like the idea of just keeping this one layer and keeping it really simple, but we'll just stamp our sentiment right here. But let me grab my A2 layer die set. That way we can really visually see how we want to frame out this so that it's nice and even. Okay, I'm thinking maybe the third in, oops, snapped right out there. And, oh, no, I think that's too small. We'll just do one in. I don't want it to be too crowded with having a margin like that. So let's do one in. Okay, that's much better. It's not as crowded. And, oh, that gives me a little bit of grace because I didn't give myself a ton of room there from top to bottom and it allows me to take care of this little rip there. So I think that's about right. I'll go ahead and add my tape and then I can run this through my die cut machine. Okay, so I have my plates all ready to go. I'm going to get that at a diagonal so it runs through nicer. And let's trim that down. There we go. Okay, now we have our little panel being very careful with that tape, especially now that it is pressed a little bit into my paper. Oh, there we go. That's really nice. This side as well. Okay, and then there is the final little panel. I think I might even take just a little bit off of the side with my paper trimmer, side and the top, so maybe just a tad because it's not quite lined up and it happens right okay so if i do an equal amount will be just fine so if i do that that looks much better left to right 
And then if I do the same amount, so just about an eighth of an inch, just shy really, then I have that. Okay, that looks much better. My Misty's coming right back in. I'm gonna position my panel right in here. Then I can grab my stamp set. And again, I really like It's Your Birthday. I think that's super fun. Grab that. And then I can just position it where I'd like it. And I wanna do it more towards the right. Okay, and I can use the lines on my Misty to just verify that that's straight. Looks good to me. So I'll clean that down. And because I just opened these stamps up, then I will go ahead and condition that. So let me condition that really, really nice. Okay, and then I'll just use a nice black ink to place my sentiment down. Okay, and there we go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stamp this two times. There we go, oh, that looks great. Let me go ahead and reposition and give it a little bit more ink. Okay, and there we go. Oh, that looks so good. Look at the contrast. I love that. So pretty and so simple. That looks so nice. Scoring my card base again at five and a half. I did this exactly the same in the first card, so I'll just rush through this part and we'll move on to the next card. And adding foam tape to the back. Now I do still feel that I have a little bit more space at the top than I do at the bottom here, just a little bit, but I think it'll remedy itself a little once I put it on to my card base. Especially if I just bring it up a hair. Okay. And I think that looks really good, much more even. And once again, rounding it out with a few of those really pretty sequins. I think that that little placement is so pretty. And I also love this sequence because it is more of an iridescent and I feel like it is picking up a lot of the colors that I used in those new ink pads. So I think it's a natural choice for this little card collection. So I'll go ahead and place each of those down. I did a little trio at the top, kind of swooping up. I also think it's good placement on that nice O. And then I have two just below the sentiment. Okay, super cute. Okay, there are our first two cards. I think those are so fun. I'm loving this collection. Let's go ahead and make a third. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and set up everything for my third card, but this is your permission to sit back and relax and I am just going to put on some light music and I'm going to bring this third card together with this little series of balloons.
Okay, so that's how that turned out. I think that's really neat. Now that I'm looking at this, I think it would be kind of neat to do something maybe a little bit off center. You absolutely could do center, but I think it would be really fun to do something maybe like this. Okay, went ahead and ran that through. And again, just gently removing the tape. And there is my little card. I think that's really fun. Bringing my Misty right back in with my final card panel. I'm going to bring the stamps back in and I'm also going to use a combination of the two balloons. I think that would be really fun. So I'm gonna bring in this smaller balloon and add another balloon that's just going to be hollow. But I'm also going to add a little offset around this balloon. I think that'll be really kind of cute. And because I'm kind of thinking I want to do things in threes, I think what I'll do is maybe add one of the little offsets here, add a hollow balloon here, and then maybe this orange one kind of just falling off the side. And bringing my black ink in once more. These are so dainty and fine, which makes me so excited. Let's see if we can, I'm not gonna press. I'm just going to kind of dab down. Oh, that's so fun. Okay, so we got that. And we'll do just one more. Look how fine those lines are. I love that. And there we go. So pretty. Okay, now what I'm going to do is bring this panel out because I want to do this little um, creamsicle one right on the left here. So let me clean these off. Okay, and once those are clean, gotta double check. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do the offset again just to the right. Okay, that looks good. I'll take this little balloon off and let's stamp this down. Okay, looks good. I'm gonna add another just a little assurance here and we'll double stamp this as well, okay? First one down. Again, just a light press. Oh, that's cute. I think that's really fun. And then the last one. There we go, oh my gosh, I love that. Okay, so I went ahead and used that really fun die set that we used earlier on the first card, but instead I picked out the Sentiment Hooray. It's nice and simple, but even more importantly, it's smaller, and I wanted something a little bit smaller just for the style of the card, and I don't want to cover up too much of that backdrop. So I cut out two of the shadow layers in a nice 80 pound white cardstock, Again, as a reminder, everything I use will be down below, so you won't have to be confused about anything if you want to recreate any of these things or add it to your collection. And then I used a really pretty, let's get the little back off here. This is a gold glitter, isn't that pretty? And I used that for my sentiment just to really bring in some fun interest. So let me get some glue on the back of that and let's get this on our card. There we go, get this all lined up just like that and there is our pretty little sentiment isn't that fun it's so glittery and just it adds to the whole fun and excitement of the card just add a little bit of pressure on there to let that set one little spot where I think that that could move over a little bit there you go okay once again with my foam tape adding my card base to my top folding A2 size card. And then with just a little glue, I, let's see, should I just lay that right down or should I bump that up? I might bump that up once more. Again, using those tiny little squares. I think that'll be fun. Just pop those right on the back. We'll get a little fun dimension. Oh yeah, I think that that is really cute with just a little pop-up. Okay, I'm gonna add this right down here. Actually, yeah, no, I want it there. It's exactly where I got it. Okay, just like this. 
And I'm actually not going to add any additional sequins to that because I like that the shine is going to remain with the pretty gold glitter. So I'm going to keep it simple. I think that's kind of the nature of this card and I'm gonna stop there. But before I do anything else, I want to remember to stamp the back of my cards. I'm trying to get better at this because I am proud of what I am making. And let's make sure I put it on the correct direction. Lately, I've been kind of getting it on the top of the stamp, so I'm gonna try not to do it this time, but handmade is, handmade is handmade, right? Okay, so I'll link the stamp that I have or where I got it down below. That way, if you want to get your own personalized stamp, it's so important. Not necessary, you can always just sign the back, but I think it's also really fun to have something just made for you. Very cute. And finally, let's get that nice and straight. Just like that. Okay. Okay, here are the final three cards that we made. Just using a few of the fun new things in this latest release by Concord and Ninth. Thank you again to Concord and Ninth for sending me all of these brand new goodies. I am absolutely amazed by everything that just came out and I hope you add these to your collection as well. I wanna know which one is your favorite. I cannot pick one, but I'm really loving this. I love the simplicity of it. And I'm also really loving this color block of words. I think that's so fun. I love the hooray. I also love this too, because who doesn't love a really fun background? And I love also pairing it with a nice simple sentiment, which they gave us plenty of. So hopefully this was super fun and relaxing for you to watch. Let me know if you decide to add any of these to your own card making collection. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. Be be sure to let me know which one is your favorite down below. I'm super curious and leave a little balloon emoji in the comment section if you made it till the end. All right, everyone, I'll see you next time.